between 50 and 100 million people worldwide are thought to be infected with cysticercosis. Cysticercosis is highly endemic in Latin America, Sub-Saharan Africa, Southeast Asia, and South Asia, as well as parts of Korea, China, Indonesia, and Papua New Guinea. In the developing world, neurocysticercosis is a common infection of the human central nervous system and the most frequent preventable cause of epilepsy. Increasing migration from and travel to disease endemic regions means that neurocysticercosis is being seen more often in industrialized countries. Tania solium is a cesto that is the main cause of cysticercosis and its larval stage infects humans in many different sites of localization like the brain, the subcutaneous tissue, the eye, and the liver. Cysticercosis is an infection of both humans and pigs with the larval stages of the parasitic tapeworm Tania solium and it is caused by ingesting the eggs that are shed in the feces of a human tapeworm carrier. Pigs and humans become infected by ingesting eggs or gravid proglotids. A proglotid is a chain of segments attached to an organ and can either be immature, mature, or gravid. Humans are infected by this either by ingesting the food contaminated with the feces or by auto-infection. In auto-infection, a human infected with the adult tenia solium can ingest the eggs produced by it either through contamination in the feces or from the proglotids that were carried into the stomach by reverse peristalsis. Peristalsis is a series of muscle contractions that moves food to different processing stages in the digestive tract. Once eggs are ingested, oncospheres hatch in the intestine, invade the intestinal wall, and migrate to striated muscles as well as the brain, the liver, and other tissues, where they develop into cystercy. Oncospheres are the larval forms of tapeworm once it has been ingested by an intermediate new host animal. In humans, cysts can cause series of sequelae if they localize in the brain, which leads to neurocystic arcosis. Sequelae are conditions from a previous disease or injury, and neurocystic carcosis is a specific form of cystic carcosis, and it occurs when cysts formed by the infection grow within the brain, causing neurologic syndromes like epileptic seizures. The life cycle is finally complete, which results in the human tapeworm infection when humans ingest the undercooked pork containing the cystercy. The cysts invaginate in the small intestine and attach there by their scolex. Adult tapeworms develop up to 2 to 7 meters in length, producing close to 1,000 proglotids, each with around 50,000 eggs. They reside in the small intestine for years. The following are the symptoms for neurocystic sarcosis. Nausea and vomiting, abdominal pain, headache, lethargy, confusion, vision changes, balance problems, weaknesses or numbness, and seizures. Seizures are the most common symptoms for people with neurocystic sarcosis. Now it is very difficult to detect if the patient does have neurocystic sarcosis because the symptoms are very asymptomatic, which means that there, these symptoms are present in many other diseases as well. But there are two ways of detecting whether a patient does have neurocystic sarcosis or not. This is through CT scan and an MRI of the brain. Thanks to these tests, the doctors will be able to see the cysts present in the brain and choose which treatment to give the patient. The treatment for neurocystic sarcosis is very dependent on the various factors such as the individual's symptoms, stage of the cyst development, and the number of cystic cirri. Now the treatment is very dependent on the patient and how their body reacts to the cysts. Here are some regimens used to treat neurocystic sarcosis. First is the antihelminthic agents such as albendazole and praziguantel. The effect of these are that they eliminate viable cystic cirri, but may cause reactive localized inflammation. The use of these antihelminthic agents may also necessarily result in using more than one form of treatment. Another regimen is corticosteroids, 
These can be used instead of antiparasitic medication used to decrease the inflammation, but are not active against the parasite. Another regimen is the anticonvulsant medication, such as carbamazepin and phenytoin. This medication is used for patients experiencing seizures and recurring seizures. And the last treatment would be surgery. This is the last resort option because it requires you to open the brain and surgically remove the cyst or place a brain shunt in order to relieve the pressure if the pressure is too great for the patient to handle. The distribution of tenia solium and tenia saginata infections is highly related to the habit of eating raw or improperly cooked meat. Abstinence from beef as part of the religious beliefs among the Hindus prevent tenia saginata infections, while among the Muslims, prevention of tenia solium infections happen because of abstinence from pork. Maintenance of the life cycle in nature is dependent on the level of environmental sanitation practiced within that area. Animal intermediate hosts such as pigs should be kept in pens to avoid access to human feces. Contamination of the grazing fields with human feces favors infection of the intermediate hosts. Thorough cooking of meat is a primary measure of prevention and control. Freezing at negative 20 degrees Celsius for 10 days kills the cysticercy. Sanitary inspection of all slaughtered pigs, cows, and cattle should be done and meat inspection should include examination of the liver as well.